we're going to be reviewing scene by scene, frame by freaking frame, Star Trek Picard Season 3, the final season, Episode 10, titled The Last Generation. Basically, Antov Chekhov, descendant of the great Pavel Chekhov, is president and he is sending out a signal saying, listen, uh, the young people over here, they wilding out, so don't come home. Adding this Pavel Chekhov that was voiced, Walter Koenig. Koenig. Um, yeah, he actually voiced it, so that was actually super cool. And um, and he, we got another TOS character. So when you think about it, TOS, TNG, Voyager, and Deep Space Nine are all honored, and they honored Enterprise with the speech from Admiral... Uh, Shelby, yes. She and she honored them with a speech. That was fantastic. Yeah, it's super rad. And we, and Kirk's body is in Daystrom. That's all I'm saying. That's so cool. You know, a lot of it just love for the whole franchise for the series. But the feature that the focus was still on Picard and TNG. Like these were all supporting characters. So like I, I saw some people upset that like, why didn't Cisco come back and save the day? Or why wasn't Janeway the board queen? Well, it's not called Cisco or Janeway. Right. And so if, if you bring too much of these, like, let, let, let's say the captains of these of these, of these these shows are like tier ones. You don't want to introduce too many tier ones because it's going to limit what they could do with those char- characters in the future. 100%. And um, and I don't think Avery Brooks would, would have come back anyways. I mean, I'm sure, yeah, but I'm sure Kate Mogrew might have. But it would have no, limited what, what she was capable of doing in the future, right? True. Uh, from T and Toys. Sorry, guys. My point was the Syracuse Drive mm. section. Oh, would have been more advanced, which yeah, could have helped. That makes sense the, because the, he used the drive sections of of the other ships. So no, you're right. That would have been a good call. Oh, so that's you know what? That's actually that's probably the like I'm assuming in in canon re, good reason for not needing a larger crew. I would say. I like that. Okay, that's not what they were pointing out, but yeah. It was they weren't they were talking about earlier with their comment about you know having the other the Syracuse instead? She was talking about the Syracuse's drive on the. I team. know, yeah, but the Syracuse drive section mm. would have been more advanced, which could have helped with needing less crew on the Galaxy class ship, etc. I I don't know for, I don't know where you heard that. You'd have to come up with that. I've never heard that before that you need a certain number of people. So. I mean, I'm 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 sure, but a lot a lot of people are. are are thinking that way. That's not just me. I'm just making. I'm not just, making, I'm not just pulling this out of random stars and being like. I think. Oh. Well, I mean, I think that's your head cannon. That's not, your head cannon. Not, I mean, okay. So it's, it's if it's my head cannon, it's a lot of people's head cannon. Not that it bothers right. me. I don't really care. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, it's a lot. But this could explain that away because they took different parts of different ships that probably didn't need didn't need as many people. Yeah. Great. Good point. Cool. I'll take it. I'll take that. All right. Here we are. We're at Jupiter, and I'm so sorry. I gotta, I gotta say sorry for accidentally spoiling spoiling this on Tuesday. You did, yeah, <laughs> you did. It was yeah. not my intention. So <clears throat> I, I had not, I had not seen this for a very long time, and uh, I had seen ten, but I had not seen it for a long time. I watched it again that night, and Shane was like, "You son of a monkey! You spoiled the <laughs> Jupiter thing," and I didn't even know it. I just thought it would be cool if the Borg cube was hiding in the the Jupiter's eye. So you and Terry had the same cool idea because you had forgotten about it. There All right, that's true. So just to be clear, it wasn't. I didn't do that on purpose. It was. I. It was, it was a mistake. So just note uh, a couple things here. Space Dock is holding back the fleet right now, so the fleet is attacking Space Dock, and these guys are running off to Jupiter to because they found this Borg ship <clears throat> that was close. How? And the reason why they did that was because they. The signal had to be close. Picard figured out. Right. How gnarly, how gnarly of a defense, uh, how gnarly is the defense on Space Dog that it's able to hold that many ships back for that long? Surprisingly. Very, I mean, it's it's Earth's defenses for the planet, so I can see it being pretty substantial. It better be. It better be substantial, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's pretty rad, though. Like we, yeah, I don't I think we've cool. ever seen. We're gonna it. see it in a second. Yeah, but we, have, but up until this, have we ever seen Earth's defenses in a, in a Star Trek show? Not like that. No. <clears throat> here we go. Okay, yeah. So as he goes through here, um, 
it was awesome. I love the shot where they pan back. You yeah. see all of these, what look like probably communication devices. This is the way they're getting the signal as far as they are, I'm guessing. Yeah, they're like anten antennas <clears throat> or something. Antennas. And as you pull back, such a great shot. Um, you see how big this board cube actually is. It is big as hell. This is is this the biggest board cube we've ever seen? Uh I don't know. How big was Jaborgi's ship? I thought that was pretty big. I mean, hers was not a board cube. Yeah, but their but their ships uh flew into that too. So. Hers was the La Serena, like built upon, yeah. Right. But I'm just saying for, as far as board cubes classically that we've seen, this seems like it's the biggest one. Yeah. This this is terrifyingly large. Like, look at that little tiny dot. Huge. Yeah. That's super. And, and, and also, the interesting thing is, there's this is there's a trans trans warp conduit in Jupiter. How the heck does that work? That's oh, crazy. They built it inside the gas mm. giant. Oh, maybe that's what they used to power it. Is the gas giant? It's just really interesting. The whole idea of it. Yeah. This is this is gigantic. <laughs> it's so big. It's, yeah, but you know what? And they needed to do this for later in the episode because you got to be asking yourself, it's flying around inside the cube. Right. Yeah. I like this though. Like this is this is one of those mm. things where it's like it's super big, but it's also e e even cooler because it's so big. Unlike what they try to do with Independence Day, where they made the spaceship larger than the planet itself. You know, this makes sense to me. So I'll take an upvote for this one just because it's oh, yeah, such upvote. a good shot. That's right. I'm going to do the same thing. The Last Generation. I love this title. I'm upvoting this title. It's a good title. Listen, the first title, the very first episode of season three was, was titled what? The Next Generation. Mm -hmm. The last episode, The Last Generation. It's just my OCD thanks you, Terry. <laughs> I would have called it the next next generation but then we would have known the ending so right <laughs> the final generation <laughs> the final generation like what's happening here a lot of people were saying yeah it's the last generation for the borg that's for dang sure yeah <clears throat> look at this look how cool this is man it is holding mm. on so this is cool this it's really really great graphics yeah um look at all those ships just so i have a it. question <clears throat> sorry and someone could tell me in the chat are none of the crew members on the space station Borg? No, we talked about this. Remember, um, there it probably likely happened. They're not going to show us everywhere in the world or everywhere in in this area of every Borg that happened. They they probably have more senior people on you know on the space station than they have younger people, right? Okay, so they're probably able to stop whatever I... sort of Borg thing was occurring i can buy that but i would rather it be that in order to be borgified they had to be close to the network ships that were getting the signal possibly but i will tell you as a guy who who served on ships the bulk of your population of your ship are young people so you know as you get more senior you need less people so it would be easy to if all of the young people on a navy vessel decided screw it we're overthrowing the older people it would not be hard to do yeah all right I get that. <clears throat> Either way, it's very cool. We've never seen that before. Another first, another first in Star in Star Trek. I, we've never seen Earth's defenses is super rad. Yeah, I think it's cool. I'll upvote it. Yeah, I'll upvote it too. And um, I love that they're all different ships. I, yeah, another upvote. <laughs> I'm upvoting that right there. <laughs> Just because Picard season one did not do that. Da yeah, David. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's getting an upvote because Picard season one didn't do this. Because this this shouldn't deserve an upvote. Mm -hmm. This should be the standard, right? Right, right. right. It should be but the standard. But David Blass, like every ship is a, is a different ship. It's a different identity. It's super. It's very attention to detail is so, so so good here. I love this so much. I love how we get to the Titan. I, I love this here where basically Esmar's like, fire, 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 fire. I mean that's kind of the way you would be like with Borg, <clears throat> and it also gives us the you know. All of these ships are just continuously firing, you know? Yeah. Um, can I ask you, I mean, because this is a question people are asking, and I don't have an answer for it, but not, like, the Borg, these new Borg aren't communicating the way older Borg used to communicate, at least not mm -hmm. the same, not, not exactly the same way. Like, they're using, well, yeah, we're they're not using words. The hive mind. Right. 
Some of them are. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that there is some element. We've always had the Borg say things, right? Resistance is futile. You you hear them say that to other people, right? To other beings or whatever. Yeah, but she's only. They don't she's typically not... talk to each other. Right. 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 Which is different. And uh, you know, are they trying to give the actor some lines? You got to remember how often do the Borg become um, characters that we've been following. It doesn't happen very oftenly. Often it doesn't happen very frequently, where you know characters we're following have become Borg. So we probably don't get to see as much of the Borg that are just basic drones. You know. Yeah, I mean? yeah. I'm choosing to believe that because they have no hardware, <clears throat> then their hive mind is not as advanced. Well, they did say they're not. It's not the same thing. They're, they're, it's no longer about assimilation. It's about evolution. I see. That's what the Borg Queen says. So they are not the same as the Borgs as before. Okay. I do like the look of them though. Mm. I like like the like the black streaks. Like it looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. See, that looks really rad, in my opinion. Yeah, it shows the change. You know, something in the Borg DNA has overtaken their DNA. Right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, my first. Oh, this is cool. Yeah. This is cool. Go ahead. My first upvote is the teleportation gun or you know, whatever. <laughs> I've never even never even thought of something like this. So before they got to the, the, the bridge, <clears throat> you know, and now it, it must have gone down this way where Seven's like, look, I don't want to kill these people. These are our crew members. Right. So let's figure out a way to lock them up. Right. And so go ahead. Yeah. And so they modify their weapons or whatever. And when they shoot them, it literally beams them into another part of the ship. Right, it sent them to the transporter room, which way they were able to lock. So yeah, it's and then super cool. Seven mentions it. You know, I think you just invented the first transportation gun or something like that. Yeah, it's cool. Like that. Why? Why wouldn't that not be a thing? Is there a reason why that wouldn't be a thing? I mean, I I would like to know how it works. Like, how do you? How does the weapon fire and then teleport? You know, and then uh, transport them. I mean, it would, so it would require it would require the ship to work in conjunction with the gun it couldn't just be the gun doing it which they don't have control of so i you know it would be it would be nice to be able to understand that going forward i mean the fact that they acknowledge it is good but uh i'm definitely curious how that tech works interesting yeah same here all right super cool they take back the bridge um now <laughs> that's an interesting little comment yeah, here. go ahead this this moment was really funny Apparently, this guy is just a cook, but he trained as a pilot. And he's like, I'm just I'm just a cook. I don't really know. I, I mean, it makes sense. Not everyone, not every single person is going to be some, like, superstar. At least at least not going to be this confident superstar. Like, look at Barkley, or Barclay, how do you say his name, in TNG. He was confident right. at his job, but he wasn't confident at anything else. He wasn't a very good officer, because aside from the one job he had... So I can see how one of the old guys that's that didn't get taken over is like I, I just cook, man. I'm a cook. Yeah, well, it's just like a you know like like a current navy vessel. You know, you have it's a city, so these ships are cities. You have to have somebody who does everything. You got to have somebody who cooks. You got to. I mean, you you have the I guess you you have the you know technology that helps do things that maybe jobs people don't have to do, but. I mean, you think of every job that a city needs, pretty much somebody needs to be able to do that on a ship in order to make the ship do all the things you want it to do. Yeah, why would they need a cook if they have replicators? <clears throat> Maybe somebody who hands out the food? <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I guess I they, they, in TNG... Or maybe they don't always use, use them? I don't know. In TNG, they had replicators, but they also had Guinan's Bar, 10 Forward, right? So Yeah, I mean, you got somebody who definitely can make food. I mean, maybe people get tired of doing replicators all the time, maybe. Yeah, okay. So what happens is uh, Seven mentions that they have to disable the fleet formation before uh, they figure out what's, what's happening because they don't want to end up like the USS Excelsior. Mm. Right. Back on the Enterprise D. We learned that the Borg Cube is only 36% operational and most of its resources are being used to transmit the signal. Uh, so it's kind of setting us up to understand that, you know, there may not be a large force of Borg to deal with down there. Interesting. Deanna's having a feeling she's never had before. She's uh, describing it as a quiet suffering. And we get this interesting moment where we learn 
data actually shares his feelings. And this episode is a lot of data uh, giving us his feelings and right. kind of searching out this new character he is. And he basically hates the board. He just, I hate them. And I'm like, whoa, that's like visceral. Yeah. If I'm going to be honest, that felt, that felt a little forced, but I'm not sure if I'm hearing that because I'm someone who watched, you know, 187 hours of data or, or it was actually forced because like, I know it's a different data now. So that makes sense, but, but it's hard. You don't think of it as a different data right. and it's hard to think of it as a different data, but it is. And this data has feelings and considering everything that data has been through, if you process those emotions, would he hate the board? If yeah. he was human and he'd been through all those experiences. Yeah. Cause all the humans hate the board. I mean, yeah, he went through, but he went through a lot of uh, ha- uh, suffering at the hands of the Borg. As yeah, I mean, he was. Remember what happened to him with the Queen on during contact, first contact. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's he's had firsthand experience. I mean, and... he didn't like it. I would have liked it, Data. <laughs> Looked hot to me. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so his feelings I think are are reasonable and make sense. Um, so uh, Deanna senses Jack, but she says he's totally consumed by the collective. And uh, Worf asks, you know, the question that everybody should be thinking, what if he's at the point of no return? Right. But uh, Beverly and, and, and Jean-Luc don't want to hear none of that. Um, they say he, they insist that he's still in there. Yes. Um, interesting here. I know there's a lot of information here, but the cube lowers its shields um, and it appears Picard says that they're being invited in. Right. <clears throat> right. It's because, you know, the, the classic. Uh, arch villain thinks she's already won and she wants to put the cherry on top and have Lucius right. there to witness it. Excellently said. Classic. <clears throat> the classic villain. And so I love this. I mean, I just love it when they do Star Trek stuff. So Data brings up a screen with all the life signs, right? Mm-hmm. And Beverly thinks to have the computer isolate the life sign energy signatures that mimic human neural frequencies so they can try to isolate Jack. And that's exactly what they do. Uh, they're able to isolate his his brain chemistry and so that they can use it to to essentially find him on the board cube. Really great. I mean, this, this is what I love about Star Trek. Yeah. They, it's not like Star Wars where they're like, go get him, kid. And then they go inside and they're like, <laughs> boom, there he is. They're in the chamber. Like, right, well, how right, the hell did you find him on that do, giant you, ship? You got to be like, oh, <laughs> there he is. There, there he is. Two, two, two. Oh, no, right. it's a lot. Two, two, two. Right. No, yeah, yeah like, uh, like in, <clears throat> you're talking about freaking obi-wan kenobi where reva can always find everyone at all times even on other planets Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like she just like i'm going to find the boy gets just just gets on the first first planet she gets to just just happens to stop at the guy's house first like yeah it's it's just not believable and and it it requires only a, a couple lines to make it believable well, I mean, there is some writing thought that has to go into it. Like this took a little, this is, this is a thing, you know, and this is what Star Trek fans love about Star Trek though. If you don't do these kind of things in Star Trek, it's just not Star Trek. That's and true. that's another thing that Picard season three does really well. They break down the elements and things that we need to figure out crap. <laughs> that's what we love. Right. And I'll upvote it because it's Star Trek. Yeah. <clears throat> now, so they, uh, they got the invitation and Picard is going to take off with, Worf and Riker. Uh, Worf does say, when Riker offers to go with them, Worf says, and I'll make it a threesome, which is funny. It's such a great line. And it's funny because this is like a serious moment. And you you have to ask yourself, like, how much seriousness versus levity do we need in this situation or want? And you keep thinking, well, this isn't a moment for levity. But then it happens and you're like, oh, my God, that was great. Right. You know, and it's like it it worked. Yeah, and I and I, I, I love that because it didn't actually take away from the moment. Right. It just sort of added to it. It was a quick line, but it added to it. And it made me chuckle. And then Data wants to come. Of course, that's his crew, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Captain is his captain. Those are his crew. He wants to go help them. And Picard and I like this again. I'm gonna upvote <laughs> this because I love the fact that this wasn't just like no Data. We need you to stay on the ship so you can fly it. Yeah. It wasn't like, here's a plot device so we can ha- we can break up the crew. Like, his explanation made a lot of sense. 
Well, yeah, I mean, it, it completely makes sense. They don't know what the board cube is going to do, do, and they need somebody who can handle things properly to, you know, they need a lot of, they need just as much power on the ship as they do going down to the board cube. Right. Yeah. You can't, you, you know, can't, between Jordy, Data, and Beverly, they can do that. Right. You can't front load Indeed. everything in one spot. Right. Yeah. I like that. Um, yeah, so they're going on the ship now. Before it turns around, you want to explain what happens? To this because it's pretty cool. This was this was yeah, my first is, uh, my first watering eye moment here. Yeah, so it begins with me too. I'll about this. Um, he basically says uh, it's been a. He turns around and he's like, "It's been an honor serving with you all." And um, if I and I think we put something in here like you know, if you teared up a little bit, don't feel bad because you're not alone. Because this is the moment, guys. This is yeah. 36 years. Yeah, this right. is the moment. I, lo- I also love that Picard specifies at the beginning <laughs> of the episode how long it's been. That was great. Oh, yeah, that's true. He's like, we finished this tonight. Like, you know how meta that is, though? <clears throat> what? What's that? When he says... How meta? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's meta, right? It was like... It is. It, it took us 35 years, but we finished this tonight. And an episode that's literally airing at midnight... Well, yeah, but in the at the end of the second, at the end of well, remember the, the Borg. We are introduced to the Borg in the second season of TNG, right. so it makes sense. No, no, I, I, it works, but I think it's also <laughs> sort of like that's called really good writing. Yeah, <laughs> like it works on two levels. It works like on it two works levels because of, right. yeah, it works because it actually is that. And oh, by the way, yeah, this is the end. You don't have to. You don't have to <clears> break <throat> the fourth wall to break the fourth wall. Yeah. I love that. Now they're on the board cube. The board cube looks to be decimated. There are not very many drones around. The ones they do find are in various stages of, uh, I guess, ill repair is the only word I have. Um, but they look they look rough. They ain't, they they are not operational. Yeah, some of, uh, we see like a couple of them seem to be almost skeletons. Right, like they're being absorbed. Um, they're be they've been being absorbed, and basically it's, it's to keep the board queen alive long enough. There you go. There's the skull. Yeah, so basically, uh, their bodies are nutrients for the Borg Queen. So this is a, this is as bad as it's ever been for the Borg. Hundred percent. Yeah, we get to learn more about that coming up, and which is nice. We get continuation of Borg story. We get, and I just love that. Yeah, we get continuation of uh, of Borg story, and it came <laughs> straight from Enterprise. I'm sorry, Voyager, which is great. Yep, sure did. I, I have I've literally turned my ringer off three times now, and it just someone's like it just doesn't want to do it. Someone's activating my ringer without my consent. <laughs> well, Picard did tell them before they broke apart here that um, that he he can't be he can't be a Worf and Riker's captain anymore. He needs to be a father, right. and so he basically sends them them off on his own, and then he goes on his own. Uh, I love that line. <clears throat> I loved it. Um. It was awesome. And then he starts communicating with Beverly and he's like, leave me to, to Jack, basically. Yeah. And he tells her, and this is interesting because uh, he he gives her, um, he basically gives her an okay, like tells her you've done well. You did exactly what you should have done. Don't second guess all the choices that you've made with Jack. You did the right thing awesome. because he loses communication with her after this. Right. And then she goes down to the, the next level. And he still runs into Jackie. So he finds Jack. Vox, I guess, is to be appropriate. Um, and uh, he's essentially all borged up. Got the whole suit and everything. And he is the transmitter. He's the one sending the signal out to the other Borg that are that are conducting the attack. Right. And, he, and he's and literally then, like, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, uh, if you want to say more about that, because I'll, I'll, I'll... I was going to say, and, and like, you can hear him in his speech. He's issuing orders, basically, and explaining mm-hmm. why, and it's classic Borg. It's good. And then as jean Luke's talking to him, we get the, the Borg Queen's laugh. Yep. And it is and, the original mm-hmm. voice of the Borg Queen, but I, but it's not the act. I don't right. know. This, is this an actor, or is it like a animatronic or something no it's an actor yeah no it's 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 the voice of alex alice krieg um but it's an it's another actor in there and it's because uh they could not you know there's just wasn't enough money to do everything they wanted to do so they couldn't actually bring the actress back it's it's cheaper to do a voice than it is to have her in person hey man actress did pretty good i gotta say um this looks so rad 
Like, yeah, she has the disfigurement. The, she has the injuries from Endgame. Yeah, she does. Well, them and more. Them and more. But she has like that facial when it was bubbling. She has. Like this is a continuation of what's you know thought process went into that. I know, so like so, like someone actively went and made sure that the character had the same marks on her face from Voyager. Like, right? I'll take that up, vote. Yeah, yeah, me too. Look at that. And, and to be honest, the actress looks very, very similar. Well, that's makeup. Yeah. So makeup, man. How about that? <clears throat> and he's like just in shock a little bit. We get back over to space dock where bad things are happening. And then, well, they do and say the Enterprise is near a Borg cube, so. So they, they know where they're at. And so Seven realizes, you know, we need to figure out, we need to buy them time, whatever they're doing. They're, they're, she says they're obviously going after the Borg, um, and we need to buy them time. Right. And they figure out the way to, uh, I guess, line of sight is required for the fleet formation. So they can just activate the cloaking device. And then, yep. And then run, and then run amok. And she Very has, true. and this is this is the, this is a vote for me. Me too. Okay, I am a sucker. I am a straight sucker for a motivational speech, <laughs> baby. You can get me to do something I never wanted to do if you motivate me enough. Most of the time, in TV shows and movies, it's done so poorly that the motivational part of it is lost in how cringy it is, right? Right. But not here. No, it's not, done well. It's done well. We are we are the last of our it's oh. fight for fight for what's below. Fight for your families. Dude, fight it made it made me want to join up. Where do I sign up, Seven? <laughs> and this is this is how I got suckered into joining the army, by the way. Because it was right at, right after 9-11 and some recruiter gave me this motivational speech about defending my country and my family. And next thing you know, I'm in the army. I'm like, damn it. Yeah, that's funny. She says here, we are all that's left of Starfleet and it's up to us. And they know that they, they very well might die right here, right now. And, and, and dude, the, the cadence. <laughs> but in this moment here and now, I mean, dude, it was like, a, it was like watching, it was like Al Pacino on any given Sunday. She delivers <laughs> this perfectly, cool. man. Yeah, well done. It's about those. It's about <laughs> those inches. Yeah. This guy's like. Dang, this guy's we're like. Gonna die, aren't we? We're gonna die. I'm gonna die up here, and I didn't. I didn't finish my souffle. <laughs> I'm not asking you to die for nothing, but I am asking you to die. So when we do, and I'm just gonna speak it into existence now, <clears throat> when we do get Legacy uh, Star Trek Legacy. I hope that this guy gets a cameo as like the bartender in Ten Forward. Okay. <laughs> why not? I mean, why not? Yeah. Making a new show. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. And they cloak. I'm still. So I'm, back I'm, on the, I'm uh, still confused, by the way, on why all Federation ships don't have cloaking devices. But uh, another day for that. I don't know. I don't want to go there right now. No one knows. No one knows. All right. Um, but there was no, but there was a no. There, there was an agreement not to have cloaking. Right, shield. but there was it an was, agreement with a with people that don't exist anymore. Right, who doesn't exist? Like the Romulan government. Romulan government's completely gone. Uh, I think they relocated, so they're still Romulans. But um, but the Klingons as well, I believe. Right. So the Klingons and the Romulans and the Dominion are all allowed to break this rule, and we can't. <laughs> like what the hell, bro? I don't know. It's that's a battle for another day. Imagine China going, "Listen, guys, uh, you can't use automatic weapons." Well, they did say we can't. They can float we uh, weather spy balloons over our country, but we're not allowed to fly them over there. So silly. Uh, uh, anyway, th this shot's really cool. I'm gonna upvote this. Um, the Jack in the board. The Jack looks great, by the way, in the board getup. But also with the Queen right behind him. What a terrifying! Like what a. Ah oh, man, I can't. Show so what it she's to you. saying here is that the um, what she's saying is that Jack is home. You know, she is his home, and basically he's like telling her, you know, no, you tricked him into coming here, and she's like, oh no, 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 he came on his own, and you know what? That was truthful. You know, he did. Jack was searching her out because right. he was, and and so they were actually. Have we gotten to that part of the story yet? Not yet. Yeah. It yes, says, we are there. One so it which says, Jack and I. She go ahead. 
so it says here that um, she says that they were left after Voyager, after Janeway, basically uh, um, jacked up the Borg at the end of Voyager. Um, they were left basically unable to travel, uh, dying, starving. They were just going to basically die of old age and starvation. Right. Until she heard Jack. Yeah, Jack. And, uh, and she kept calling him to her. And he's going to be the savior of the Borg because his DNA is going to allow them to assimilate. Uh, but th now she doesn't want to do it like they used to do it. They want to assimilate this new way. And they're not assimilating to, like, bring everybody into the Borg. They're they're assimilating to conquer and destroy. Right. That's, like, the new thing. She's angry. She wants to – she don't want to bring you into the Borg anymore. She wants to just destroy everything. Right, right. So we even have a different version of the Borg, which makes sense. I mean, think about it. You know um, – you know, when Janeway comes back and, and essentially, you know, destroys the Borg complex, um, you know, how would you react to that? You would want to get even. And that's what's happened here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you took out a lot of Borg and mm. you really messed up the queen. You messed her up good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be pissed, too. I get it. Um, also, she doesn't have the ability to survive much longer using the old ways. She doesn't have the drones she needs to rebuild mm -hmm. or to fix her ship or to go anywhere or do anything important. Like she's, this is the only way for her. Either she sits there and she dies or this is the last, uh, her last survival option and she's going to use it and conquer. That's true. It's, it's funny. Um, <clears throat> I, I kept trying to wonder like, how do Borg, Borg don't eat. They don't eat or they don't sleep. They regenerate. Right. They regenerate. They get so I kept trying to wonder, like, <clears throat> she said starve to death. So the Borg must not have been able to regenerate. That must have been the problem. So whatever destruction that Janeway created left them unable to regenerate. And I think I think I think regeneration has something to do something to do with nutrition in some way, too, though. Like how how else would you repair cells in your body? I mean, they are partially organic, right? So they need, mm, they they need to, yeah. a regeneration is going to have to include some kind of organic mechanism for replacing and rebuilding cells and muscles and stuff like that that you lose throughout the day. That's a good point. Um, and there's been a lot of discussions about it, actually. So, yeah, I'm not mm -hmm. going to answer that question here, but yeah, it's, it's thought it's a it's a thoughtful, thoughtful thing to consider. I mean, she's looking rough. That's for sure. Look at it. She's all she's all. Well, I mean, her bones are showing. So. That is that is not a hashtag green granny. <laughs> right. Well said. <laughs> That's right. Um, okay. Now, the Borg drones that are left start waking up. Oh, wait. I guess we're in something else right now. Oh, so Let's this is when she's, right. she's dumping the exposition. She's like, we're going to take over. We're going to blah, blah, blah. And, um, and I guess uh, so. Sydney... Uh, uh, LaForge and and um, and some other Borgified youngins are breaking the cloaking device, right? Yeah. So, but I think way before that, um, oh. we got to the point. Let's there see. It is. Yeah. So, um, not yet. They're not. Okay, not yet. I'm sorry. They're trying to reconnect. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to say it on copyright claim museums. I'm a little bit lost here. Um. All right, so this is when she's explaining the whole deal with Vatic yeah. and the changelings. That's right. That's correct. And they struck a deal. They both had a bone to pick. Right. And this is cool. I mean, it makes it makes she needed hands. She, yeah, there was no way she was going to do it without someone else. And I, you know, she would have had to. I mean, she was using threats of violence over the changelings as well. You got to remember as the hand, right? Mm -hmm. She was telling them, you know, you're not as special as you think you are. You know, you're not, you know, your, your survival is, doesn't matter. Remember, that's what she was saying. Ooh, what if the changelings mm -hmm. after they escaped Daystrom found her and she infected them in some way? Well, I don't think we can say that because that would be, they would have had to show us that. Yeah. You know, you, you couldn't. You could, you could only go so far with not showing the story. I'm just trying to figure yeah. out why they were so afraid of her. It had to be something, but I don't know. 
I mean, it's. I mean, they could be. A, they could have been assimilated. I, I guess. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Long. Or the changelings. It could also be that the changelings wanted revenge so badly that, um, you know, that they were willing to do whatever it took. I like that. Now, with Worf and Riker, some of the Borg have woken up and they're trying to stop them. But Worf has a giant sword and he just goes to town on these Borg. Also, at this time, the Borg did fire at the D and their shields are quickly down to 68%. Right. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> That's just the sword. Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, okay. Really cool. <clears throat> All right. So there's, uh, see, I don't know where we're at. Where's, is this the moment with the, <laughs> are you bounce? Are you just going like forward every I'm 10 just seconds? Going, How I'm does just going work? forward? Yeah. It's 10 seconds. How, how much is it? 10 seconds. Okay. 10 well, seconds. It, 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 they, they did a lot of bouncing back and forth. Um, but what we learned, it must've skipped over it already is that maybe it's that moment. Yeah. So. Basically, the okay. Just stop for a second, so that way I can. What are you? What are you <clears> trying <throat> to explain? I can get to there. I'm going to go back to everything you've missed. So, okay. so the basically the Enterprise, you know, was trying to fire back at the board ship, right? Mm-hmm. And so Beverly had to do it manually because Jordy didn't set up the uh, the automated weapon system, so right. she had to fire manually. And so <laughs> they like went and did like big time damage to the board ship, and uh, and they all turned back and look at Beverly. And she's like, a lot's happened in 20 years. So right. she has skills that she didn't have before, basically. Yeah, she was on her on her own frontier medicine, right? Doing those things. Uh, we also, I believe, the scene where Riker tries to pick up the the Kerleth. Happens. Yeah, this right here. It, right here. <laughs> That's great. I had no and, idea you know, you it was that Riker heavy. To pick it. My God, this thing's so heavy. Um, but what's cool is Worf's like take off the handle, and we're like the hilt. The hell's right. about to the hilt. Yeah. What's what the heck's about to go on here? And we find out that there's actually a uh, a phaser hidden inside the 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 Kerleth for him to use. I mean, it's just like James Bond weaponry, man. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a pretty powerful phaser too, because pretty soon here he just takes out the Borg. Like he starts taking him out, and of course, Riker's like, "You had a phaser the whole time." Yeah, uh-huh. like, swords are cool. He says, "Swords are cool, right?" <laughs> All right. I don't know if he would have used the word "cool," but yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, so the other the ships uh, under the control of the Borg are actually using, like, predictive modeling to locate the Titan now. I thought that was cool. Mm, that's cool. Because they can't see them. Um, yeah, hopefully, the whole time you didn't use it? So those are cool. All right, so they give the beacon, uh, the location information to the to um, Enterprise, and now now it's their turn. Yeah, and they figure they're going to go and destroy it. But what Jordy realizes is that it's impossible to navigate uh, through the cube, that nobody can do it. And then Data says he can do it. And Jordy's like, no, it's impossible. You know, he immediately is like, no, he can't. And Data's like, you know, I have a gut feeling. Trust my gut. <laughs> He's like, your gut. And nobody's used to Data being this way. Right. You know, it's either you can or you can't. And here is here is Data using his humanity that he's, that he's suddenly acquired. Uh, to trust his gut. And of course, because this is what TNG is all about. It's what Star Trek is about. You trust your team members. Yeah. And he trusts data. Yeah. But also like if I was, if I was Jordy, I'm like, okay, I'll trust your gut, but I'm also going to trust the fact that you're literally the only person that can do this. <laughs> that's on this ship right now. He's that's, the only one who could do it. That's yes. on this ship right now. You're the only person right. that can maybe do this. So I guess good right. luck, bud. Yeah. It's cool. Here goes nothing. <laughs> yeah. And I think, uh, Deanna goes, what do you mean by nothing? Right. You know, cause she's like, you know, how confident are you? Yeah. It's supposed to be a funny line. And then, uh, as this is going on, Deanna says, she senses, I sense, uh, enjoyment or something like that, <laughs> which I guess confirms data's, you know, if she's sensing data's feelings, then that means she's, he, there has to be some element of him that's human. That's true. Or yeah, something mm-hmm. that's there. She's sensing right, for her to sense know. it. Yeah. That's really cool. Look at this. Look at the space station. Upvote. Up oh my god! It Love is it is like covered in phaser fire. Look at this. That is insane. Mm. Earth's got some defenses, baby. Dude, look at the shield on Earth. It looks a lot like the Soon Shield, by the way, from season two. 
a little bit, just not red. Yeah, it's yeah, it's. The, I mean, it's, how many different ways you're going to use a honeycomb? Obviously, yeah, it's the kind you? color. Like the red means evil, right? Blue right. means well, I mean, friendly. I mean, you're going to use the honeycomb. It's the strongest, you know, strongest formation in nature, right? So, I mean, it makes sense if you're going to do a globe that you'd use a honeycomb pattern. I gotta say, I don't see anyone taking out Earth anytime soon because you. T- the Borg turned its entire fleet against it, and it still took a god awful amount of time to take out that space station. <laughs> like, imagine the Romulans coming. We can literally let them sit there and barrel on us for like two days before we even have to show up. Well, it hasn't been two days. It's only been a very short period of time. I know, but there's a lot of ships there. Like, there's a lot of ships there. I get it. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say that it would last two days. I mean, okay. Let's see, we're doing the Star Trek nitpicky thing. But this has been about an hour. It takes them about an hour to knock out, knock it out, right? They, as soon as this happened, right, they get onto the D, they get going, and now they're going to Jupiter. Right. So maybe two hours. Right. Yeah. And and they take it out, and it's like there's nothing left to defend Earth. The fleet starts targeting every major city. Now, I have a nitpicky thing. I feel like that took them a long time to start actually firing on those cities, though, right? Well, they didn't. They, I guess, they were going to come down to the city. They weren't going to do it from space, because they actually do a thing where they're they're heading towards the cities. Oh, I see. So they didn't shoot just from orbit. Um, we got a super chat from Andre Benson. Don't care what anyone says. Enterprise flying through the Borg cube is hands down the most fire awesomeness scene in the history of Star Trek. <laughs> pretty absolutely. Pretty I wish wish we could have paused it. Thank you, Andre, for pointing that out. I'd like to upvote that because we didn't actually see it here. You weren't able to, I guess, when you were skipping around. Um, but uh, it, it it was really cool. Something we've never seen before mm-hmm. is the is the Enterprise D. Like, you know, it's very limited to what we could they could ever show us back in the day. Right. But they actually show it flying around, doing maneuvers, um, firing on the board vessel. It was really awesome. So yeah, so they realize uh, that if they destroy the beacon, that it will blow up the board vessel. Right. Because they're about to do it. And Jordy's like, stop, wait. And then he says, Data, you're seeing what I'm seeing. Right. And uh, they realize this. And so Jordy looks back at Beverly because now this is a really great moment here. And, and I think a lot of people probably missed it. Okay, I want to upvote this. He looked, stop right there on board on Jordy's face. This is perfect. You see his eyes. He's looking at her for confirmation that it's okay to blow up this thing because Jack's gonna die. Right. Okay. But if they don't blow up this thing. His daughters are going to die. Right. This moment is so much more. There's so much more depth in this moment than people realized as it was happening. Here's Jordy looking at Beverly saying, you decide the fate of all of both of our children. Either your child dies or my child dies. And because um, and because, you know, Jack, you know, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, Beverly knows this. And so she agrees to allow it to happen. Now, it would be a tough thing for any parent to do, you know, save the galaxy or, or let your child die. Yeah, I would. And, I uh, was. I would. Uh, I would burn the galaxy to the ground. I don't know if I'd be strong enough to do it. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, oh, be like, looks like you got all you efforts are Borg now. Mm-hmm. Good luck. So definitely a great moment for me and just realizing that. And then uh, so they say, beam them back up, Worf and Riker. And Riker's like, belay that order. I am. I'm not. I'm not leaving him. Right. And two, it's it's from this point on, like, if you weren't already like emotionally compromised, like right. it's just emotional compromise after emotional compromise, the rest of this. It really was. And you see, as soon as he says it, Deanna's like, oh, you know, she just like, oh my God, right? And he's like, he's given me a lifetime. The least I can give him is one minute. Oh, that was so you know? powerful, dude. Oh my God. I was like You get this moment, it's such a great moment. And um and then Worf Worf has this great line. He's like, "This is good." For a moment there, I thought we were going to get out without uh, dying. Yeah, you know? for a moment there, I thought we were going to live. Right? Yeah, that was <laughs> great. A very Klingon moment. Yeah. Um, and of course, they get to the chamber with Picard, and there's really nothing they can do. Like they're there, but as they get there, Jean Luc's plugging himself into the system because he realizes she's telling he's first he's trying to free Jack, and the Borg Queen kind of messed up. She tells him, 
it's too late. He's already too far in. If you do it now, you'll kill him. The only way he can get out of the system now is if he decides to pull out of the system. Right. And then that's when he plugs in. And let me tell you right now, I'm going to give, I want two upvotes for yeah, this next Same thing. here. I want two upvotes too. I want two upvotes. This is the most badass montage I have ever seen in Star Trek. In all of Star Trek. Yeah. This is the most, this little thing they did here. I'm just huge kudos to the, to the effects crew and the writers and everybody who put this together. This took us from like Locutus, uh, from the origin of Locutus to where Picard is now. And it was just this really cool montage of shots that get, it made me very emotional just watching it. Yeah. It was, re it was really powerful. And he's in. And Jack is sipping the Kool-Aid, man. He is. He's doing good because for the first time in his life, he feels he's not, he's at ease, right? There's no fear. There's no all of the the terrible feelings he's had have been washed away with this collective feeling that he's having, and he doesn't. And he's never felt like he belonged. You know, he's you know he's always you know the the problems with you know not having a father and 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 you know having this Borg DNA have have troubled him his whole life. So Picard has to try to reach him somehow. Yeah. Yeah, with, uh, someone said in the chat, uh, I've been running half my life from the Borg, and now I have a reason to go back. That was a really cool line, too. Yes, yeah, that was And I'm upvoting this, because I love this. So often, the TV shows don't really get the I, the concept of, like, the mindscape, and they usually make mm. it something with, like, that looks like their kitchen or a clouds, but, like, this is what I believe uh, someone's mindscape would look like. And for me now, this is like the norm. This is what it all has to look like, or I'm gonna <laughs> criticize it. You know the oh, you yeah, because they've got, they've captured this kind of like energy, this electrical. I mean, you think about what what do neurons look like in the brain, right? As they're passing right. through. I mean, it it does have somebody really thought that out and said, well, what would the collective look like if you were inside of it? Right. And I think that's kind of a nice way to do it. Really cool. And before you're gonna get to this next part, because I know you're gonna really explain it. Can the Rook, the USS Millennium Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. That's true. The Millennium Falcon did its did its thing flying around. There was a Millennium Falcon in uh in a movie too. Like they uh I forgot what movie it was. But that one of the Star Trek movies, they actually like brushed in the Millennium Falcon in the background. No one noticed for a long time. Mm, I don't remember that one. Yeah. Um so in this scene right here, uh he actually opens himself up to Jack. He's trying to convince him to, to, to get out. And so he tells him that he joined Starfleet to find a family that he had never had. He said he found them and he let them in, but he always had a barrier up. He says, John Luke says that he always felt there was something wrong with him. And now this is very interesting because there was always something about that character. And if you say anything else about this show and I, for everybody who, who, who complains about this show and saying like, Oh, it's, it's, it's just member berries. It's just this. This evolution of the character is exactly what we're talking about. For years, we had this guy who had a barrier up. And we didn't really understand what his problems were, right? He liked to keep himself private. It was just the kind of the person he was. Well, it stemmed from the fact that he was afraid to let people in. Right. So he and the fact that we're learning now that he always felt there was something wrong with him because he had this barrier up. And he did. When you think back to Vosh. Uh, um, and you think back to some of his relationships where he could have easily opened himself up and he couldn't, this rings very true. And we're getting this moment in Picard season three, a new realization about this character that we never had before. We learned that he wanted to die alone in that vineyard. The first two, the first two seasons of Picard, <laughs> he wanted to die alone in the vineyard. That, this is what we're hearing. And this was why... So many people dislike those two seasons. This this is not that that's not what a ca that's not what Captain Picard would want to do. Right. That's not it's who not, he was. No. And here here we are again explaining a way bad canon to make it work. Like we talked about earlier, right? right. This is why Metallus is, is a genius. This is yeah. why his writing team is a genius. Yeah. He took that bad canon and he and he gave us an explanation. That makes sense. It is and, in this and, moment. And it strengthens this character. The correct and character. And it strengthens the, the, the current character, right. And he now Picard now realizes that Jack is the part of him that he never, that he didn't know was missing. 
Right. You know, and this is what happens to fathers, right? Or mothers, parents, when you have, before you have children, you think, most people think, why the hell would I ever want a child? Yeah. You know, like, cause you're, you can't imagine loving anything more than you really love yourself. Right? Yeah. I'm invincible. And, Do whatever I want. However I want. Right. Whatever I want. Right. The moment you have a kid and you have that moment, like when they're born and you all of a sudden you realize, oh my God. I, this, I needed this in my life. My now life now feels more complete. Well, Jean-Luc had a son, but he didn't have that his whole life. Right. And now for the first time he's meeting his son and he's having this, this biological, it is biological. Right. And, you know, mental moment where he's realizing that the, the, the thing that kept his wall down all this time is he's, he's finally has a child. Right. Right. And so now, um, he's trying to talk him out of it, but Jack's not responding. Right. Uh, Jack's like, no, no, leave me alone. I want to stay right here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Super chat from Christopher Mays. Can we get an upvote for Troy driving the ship and not crashing it this time? Your wish <laughs> is my command, Christopher. Chris knows how to get your upvotes going. And by the way, that is actually hilarious because she did crash it into Viridian 3. So that's true. <laughs> that's during generations. And from El Presidente to Camacho. <laughs> Basically, what Picard's saying here is you have to get off Reddit, Jack. <laughs> you have, yes, the hive mind on Reddit. Thank you. Thank you. Get off Reddit. That's great. President El Presidente Camacho. Camacho. You remind great. me of someone that we haven't seen in a while. I wonder if you've changed your name. Yeah, he must um, have. Yeah, he, he's super clever. You remind me of someone, John B., maybe. Anyways, or Archmage Frey. But anyways, uh, that's okay. We appreciate you, and thank you for supporting us. Um, so we get to this p part here where they've got to make the decision, right? Oh, the beacon looks so rad, too. It is cool, the way they've kind of set this up in here. It imagines what it would look like on the interior of the board vessel, right? Yeah, yeah. Is it powered by a singularity? <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Mm. Well, so they, they decide they're going to destroy it, right? They've got to do it. Um, nobody's happy about it. Right. I'm sorry. Okay. Let me let me get to that to right part. Now. I'm trying to get to that part without getting a cup right claim. I'm sorry. So basically, the dis they're, they're going to destroy the beacon, and now there's only one minute to get him off the cube. Okay. Worf is ready to die with honor. As they wait for Picard, him and Riker kind of look at each other, and and uh, he's ready to go. Uh, Data can't get a, a lock on their signal, so the plan was they're going to blow it up. Then they're at the very least going to get Riker and Worf off the off the ship, but they can't get them either, right? Because they've gone past the contact zone, and uh, and and they don't really know exactly where they're at. Um, so that's the other problem. So as we're going through this whole thing here. Um, Picard finally says something that does reach Jack. Picard tells Jack, okay, if you don't, won't leave, then I'll just stay here with you. And I got to tell you, man, that's when I lost it because yeah. you realize what this means. Like when Picard says, I'll stay here with you. It's really what all children want to hear from their parents. Uh, all children want to know that, no matter what choices they make in their life, no matter how many bad choices or, or mistakes they make, they want to know their parents will always be there for them no matter what. And 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 Jack didn't know this about Jean-Luc, about his father, because his father chose Starfleet over a family, at least that's the way he looked at it, was that Picard didn't want him. So when Picard tells him, you know, I choose you, I choose to stay here till the end, that's when Jack finally wakes up and realizes, you know, I have a father. I have a family. This is who I should be with. Like it shakes him up and he has that moment. And suddenly you see that, uh, they, they actually have this really emotional moment where they hug, um, inside the, the hive mind. And then when he comes out of it, Jack like goes into action immediately trying to unplug himself. And guess what? Uh, Jean-Luc can't unplug himself completely, right? He's not either not strong enough or whatever it is. And Jack actually brings him out of being locutus. Yeah. He actually unplugs him from the system. This montage, too, was, like, really rad when it showed, like, the montage of them. It was so emotional. Okay, stop right there. This is a really good right, one. Right here. Go ahead. So I want to upvote that whole scene. Actually, two upvotes. It made me so emotional. I'm yeah, same. Um, and then also I want to upvote this one, and I want to give this two upvotes as well. 
when Riker, man, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but when Riker says this, I mean, it's just, I'm already emotional, but the thought of, you know, he's, his son is dead and the fact that he's basically sending to Imzadi, to his wife, she can't hear him, but he just says, Imzadi, you know, you know, I'll be waiting with our boy for you. He knows he's going to die. And uh, it's just really emotional. And then that message gets to Deanna. Such great, wonderful writing. She senses his thoughts. And that allows her to pinpoint their location. And she leaps down to the console and she yep. just fucking takes the ship there. You know, ain't nothing stopping her from doing what she's got to do to save her family. And they get there. Uh, let's see if we're to that part yet. Yeah, so Jack, while she's getting him there, Jack's rebuking the Borg Queen. And because she's telling him, you're going to be alone. You know, she's trying to like, you know, tell him all the things to get him to plug back in and, and keep him there. And then he just tells her, I won't, I'm not alone. I won't be alone. You know, he's made his choice. Yes. And this really incredible shot, which right I like here. another upvote. Look at right that. Right I'm great. giving this two upvotes. Are you kidding me? This was the best <laughs> shot of the freaking series. <laughs> it wasn't the best shot of the series. Yeah, I'm sorry. It was the best shot. shot of the series. Yeah, you're crazy. Okay. Well, but, no, I mean, there was, I mean, it was a great shot, but I don't dude, know. Dude, with the, the, like, the, the ship coming in like that was, oh my God. God, that was so damn cool. <laughs> that oh. was a great shot. It was wonderful. I just don't know if it was the best. I'm still, there's still a couple of shots where, uh, they slingshotted a couple of ships around and seeing the Titan from the rear uh, end. I mean, that stuff was cool too, but like this moment seeing where all is, through. all is lost and the roofs opened up, you know, it's all opened up because it was crashed and that ship just goes. Yeah, it was really cool. Oh, it was, it was such a cool moment. I had like literally like hair on the back of my neck stood up, dude. It's like, awesome. I, I, I haven't felt emotions, uh, like I felt with Picard season three in a very long time. <laughs> Days around. Yeah, no, that's, that's the truth. I mean, and that's kind of the one thing, and we can talk about that this after it's over. I definitely want to mention it. They end up uh, bringing all four back onto the ship and they get out of there just in time. Of course, as the Borg cube explodes in their wake. And there's my fat boy right there. That's my fat boy. The big D. That's what you're the fat boy. Okay. It's the big D man. It's the it's big the fat boy D. Or the fat girl. I don't know, but I love it. <laughs> You're like now that has a different meaning all of a sudden. Yeah, I don't. I don't care. I'll 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 go nine bon non binary for this ship. So back on the D. Uh, oh, so but over back. Uh, actually, so the the, you know, as the Borg are about to retake the bridge, right, and kill Seven Rafi and the older crew members, the connection is broken, and our young crew uh, returns to themselves, which was a cool moment seeing the graphics come off and you go they go from board back to themselves again yeah and uh and of course seven hugs sydney yeah and sydney's like i'm sorry i'm so so i'm so sorry it's great so that that means they have memory of what happened well, of course lucutus did too so it makes sense right. um let's see back on the d john luke leads his son onto the bridge and jack hugs his mother which i'm glad i, I saw that first that's what should have happened um will embraces deanna and then we get this moment where Worf, Jordy, and Data have a moment together, and uh, Worf falls asleep, like old Klingon man. Yeah, he goes, he goes, old man Klingon, and uh, snoozes. I mean, he's he's, put, he's been through a lot. He's been fighting Borg, you know, so he's tired. Yeah, Worf immediately falls asleep. <laughs> That's great. It's great. Look, so look at the look on Jordy's face right there. His eyes are all like, what? <laughs> it looks like he also went down to like pull like the lounge up. Like, <laughs> I would like to pull the, like a, like a lazy boy. <laughs> yeah. It, it, from my perspective, this is what it looks like. <sighs> <laughs> like the old know. dad move, bro. Yeah. Look, it is. It did. It went back. It did, did you bro. See that? <laughs> yeah. I had ex... no idea those chairs were reclining. I didn't now know. That. know. <laughs> Now we know, guys. And then he Maybe sees his right. daughters, right? Sees his daughters. It's seven, Rafi and his two two daughters uh, on the Titan. And he knows they're okay, which is great because how is how could Jordy have? And this is this is another great writing, guys. This is how you make a TV show. Can Jordy really be happy knowing his daughters might still be in danger? And right. Just one little quick moment showing him on the screen. Everybody's okay, and then the world is okay. Um, and then we, okay, we got the levity, 
so Picard welcomes his son to the Enterprise. Wasn't that nice? Yeah. He's like, welcome to the Enterprise. Um, as a father would do for his kid. You want to be proud of what it is you've accomplished. And then we fade to black. And you think, okay, we're done. It's over. And then it comes back in, and it's actually Will Riker giving us a captain's log. And uh, he says, start eight. And then there's like a pause, and it's like, shall we say one? Because it's a new day for Starfleet. I was like, yes. oh, you know, it's like that's cool. That was great. That we've, you know, we've we're moving on. Uh, we've learned that Starfleet used the transporters to uh, purge the Borg DNA from every young person. Right. Thanks to the new Starfleet medical branch head, Admiral Crusher. So Ad got back. So upvote that. I'm so glad that Beverly is back in Starfleet where she belongs. Yep. Um, and she also used the technology to allow for scanning of changelings. And they basically swept up and made sure they caught all the changelings. So we don't have that going. Because, you know, you know, Star Trek fans were going to be like, I didn't see him round up. What the about the changelings? Right, right, right. So they had to, write, you know, finish off that part of the story. Then we get this great moment. And I know yeah. there's some people who are going to be upset. I'm up. I'm upvoting this. Why would anyone be I'm upset? I'm upvoting it too. I'll tell you right now. Those people are going to be happy because we get confirmation. We learned that, that the changelings didn't kill everybody that they replaced. Uh, and we do get to see the real Tuvok. A lot of people were hoping this would be Janeway. A lot of people wanted to see Janeway. At the oh, end of this day. yeah. So I get, I get that. They'll be a little disappointed, but Janeway will have her time. We promise you. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. Um, and so getting to see that Tuvok's okay and getting this other interaction. I mean, when you think about it, of all the interactions on Voyager, the seven Janeway ones, the seven Doctor ones, but really the seven Tuvok ones. Right. Because he was her mentor in, in so many ways, trying to control her emotions. Um, well, her and he, the, he, her, him and the doctor, though. They were. Com together, they were extraordinarily. The doctor was extraordinarily important. Don't get me wrong. Right. But he, this is one of the main three people in Seven's life that was critical. And um, and so having him here in this moment where he, she, he basically is kind of reprimanding her, um, you know, Essentially, what's happened is is they've 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 dropped all charges against Picard and his crew uh, for you know taking over the Titan and doing all these nefarious things that they did because they essentially saved the galaxy. And now he has Seven's officer review in front of him. So this is interesting here because he's like he gives this he gives the face he gives the hmm you know that you're gonna resign, especially after what she's about to hear. So this takes place. It's really important that we understand that this takes place before. Picard and Riker show up on the Titan at the beginning of the show. This is the review that he gives of her before the event happens. Ah, it's critical that we understand this. He already felt that she was able to be a captain before all this stuff went down. And uh, he, he criticizes her first, which is great. This is exactly what you should do. He, he, he talked about her shortcomings, but then, talked about how overwhelming her positives were that she's brave and loyal and that the book she's going to, that she will write will be amazing. And he recommended her to be captain. It was great to get to see, um, captain Shaw one more time. Um, it was Todd stash. What killed, killed this role and be honest with you. I don't know how they can bring him back, but he's just somebody we need in star Trek. So yeah. Emergency, they, emergency but, engineer hologram activate. I'd be okay with him coming back as a hologram. That's fine. I mean, Robert Picardo is one of my favorite Star Trek characters, and he was a hologram. So imagine, imagine uh, Robert Picardo and him, like two snarky uh, <laughs> holograms going at it. That would be kind of funny, actually, because because be Picardo is like he's actually cranky. He's like yeah, like, he's like, he's, <clears throat> he's cranky, and this one's more sarcastic. Right. So it would actually be a funny show. We yeah. should actually do a show called the the Doctor and Captain. The Doctor Trump. and the Engineer. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, you know, we have this emotional moment where, you know, she's just overcome with it. I mean, she was basically thinking she was a failure. She was terrible at the Starfleet thing. Mm -hmm. She can't follow orders. <clears throat> but what we know and what we know is that captains, they're more than just following orders. There's a, right. a gut thing that they do. There's, there's more to being a captain than just being able to follow orders. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, so his his uh, recommendation is very strong, even though 
we thought yeah, he, he didn't like her as a person. Right, right. And and he didn't. Let's be clear. He didn't. But he's a rule follower. And also something else. Oh, another F vote here. How developing a character after they're dead. I love this. So Shaw, who's a by the book guy, right? By the book, says about seven. Uh, yeah, she's going to she might break some rules, but maybe those rules were already broken. That's great. For him to admit that is huge for him. Yeah, that's a great line. That's not too. how he feels, right? Right. That's an amazing line. I like that line a lot. Super well done. And then we're off with Raffi. Raffi is getting to see her granddaughter for the first time. Uh, Worf leaked a bunch of her classified documents to her family. To her son, yeah. Sorry, to her <laughs> Actually, son. Actually, it's cool. Yeah, he somehow all on all the screens in her son's house, like her picture comes up and all of her commendation, valor commendations are shown. All That's the fun. things that had been kept secret. Nobody was supposed to know because she's supposed to look like a derelict. Right. Right. Because she, she's Starfleet. Nobody's supposed to know she's 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 a hero. Right. Right. And now her son, who has been basically not allowing her to see her granddaughter, has this whole change of heart about his mother. Yeah. Which is really great. Um and I love this exchange here. Like they both know that Worf did this, uh, but neither of them say it. But I do have a down vote. What is that? I have a down vote. It's this moment right here. Worf leaning in to hug her. I just didn't feel like it was something Worf would do. Now, had she come to him and hugged him, and then he kind of like braced, and then we see a smile, that probably would have been a better way to do it. Yeah, because he wasn't even hugging his friends of <clears throat> he like doesn't hug. 30 years. Yeah. Oh, he, right. And so he goes in for the hug. You're right. That's he goes down in for it. So if, 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 if she had come to him and hugged him, and we got to see over her shoulder him smile, uh, that would have been good. Yeah. That's, like that's, to see that he was, that made him happy. It's going to be down boat down for mm-hmm. me, dog. I'm sorry. You're right. Yep. Yeah. But I mean, you know, on, on a on an episode of tremendous upvotes having this one one thing i guess we'll give and who knows maybe after maybe it's possible it's just hard for us to see it no but the whole series though he has not been hugging anyone else he even said in multiple times when his friends of 35 years hug him i do not like to hug right so this is there's this is very out of character so we'll say it the one mistake in picard season three we found it (laughs) we found it it. (laughs) one the one error we found it. Yeah, we found it. Yeah. Overall, though, just incredibly amazing series, and that that wasn't nearly enough to make me go, "Hold on a second, I'm angry now." It was, it was just a. Uh, I don't think he'd do that, but that's fine. Yeah, yeah, he wouldn't moment, do that. I mean, because he would. They set it up they, though. They set it up for like eight episodes or seven, seven episodes of this guy. He doesn't hug people, even his friends. Right, and well, and let me tell you what he would do though. He would have on the down low got her family yes that's something he would do 100 percent. yeah 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 um so now because data has emotions he's now in therapy uh every day (laughs) this is so funny to me he's crying because he saw somebody feeding his cat feeding feeding their cat i mean it's just it's so funny because now he's got these emotions he does not control and you know as human beings so often we have emotions and we don't understand why we're emotional sometimes <laughs> not to this degree but definitely uh, hilarious and deanna's like over it yeah she's, she's, she's over, like over it she's over there uh planning her vacation when he just keeps talking about the same stuff well she says well we've gone over an hour yet again yeah right and he's totally oblivious to it this is and, why uh, my my therapy will always be the bottle because it listens. This is the wrong answer, sir. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you cannot say the bottle is your therapy. I'm joking. I'm joking. Lord, God. Everyone, I'm joking. Do not take this seriously. <laughs> and for anybody out there listening, the bottle should not be your therapy either. The bottom of the glass Talk always looks like... back at me. <laughs> <laughs> at least something's looking at you because your parents never did. You think Starfleet Command and the Academy are on... Indeed, in the 24th, 25th century, I do not think the Academy... We think, we think Starfleet Academy is going to be in the 29th century. It will be in... Is it the 29th? No, 32nd. Or 32nd century. or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, it's, 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 it's in the Discovery timeline. So it's going to basically to pick up where Discovery leaves off is where... And it'll be happening, you know, 
I guess, on Earth. You know, that's one thing Discovery didn't do well is when when Tilly went back to Starfleet, it didn't it didn't feel like they were on Earth. No, it felt like weird. They felt like they were someplace else. Yeah, it felt like a different planet. Uh, yeah. Super Jeff from Andre Benson, Enterprise yeah. coming in above them, ten up boats. Yeah, for real. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. That was so amazing. Like, it was so good. I don't know how you don't see it the same way I do. Chris, Andre's like, why am I not getting ten up boats? I mean, I, I mean, I, I would, I would love to give you ten. You gotta be a little. If you want an up boat or two, no problem. <laughs> well, give him one at least. Okay, I'm gonna get. I'll, I'm gonna give you one for that. I'll Although you, you did upload it yourself twice. Christopher Mays for 999. Was it Jack unplugging or the cube exploding that turned the kids back to normal? Oh. It was, well, no, it's the the cutoff of the signal was what changed them back to but, normal. But, so you're but, right. But you needed Jack. Well, no, as soon as that tr- that thing cut off, I mean, there is some sort of a delay probably. So when we finally got back, they're not going to cut from the action that's happening on the cube. We're not going to cut from that scene with Jack and Picard to show them recovering on the Titan. It would be, it wouldn't be good storytelling, good flow. So you have to get through that event before showing, but if you really wanted to be serious about it, the moment that that thing was cut off, uh, that, that the, the amplifier was destroyed. They probably started, you know, so that scene where we're seven and them are on the bridge that probably happened about the same time that the thing was destroyed. We just didn't get to see it till a beat later because they couldn't do it in the middle of the action what's happening with i got i got i got an idea what if destroying the beacon gave uh jack an edge to sort of snap out of it i mean you can make up all the stuff you want i mean uh, think about this so maybe okay so if if destroying the beacon was how you uh so if you destroy the beacon then you you disable jack's connection to the kid to the kids However, yeah. if you take Jack away from it, you also disable his connection to the kids. So you can argue that you just have to get Jack out of there and, you, and no one has to die. Except for, I don't think Jack is is getting out all on his own when he's still connected to that massive hive mind. Well, he doesn't want out. You got to remember, he didn't want out. He got in before he was connected to anybody. So when mm-hmm. she when he came in to like kill the board queen, she connected to him and he was like, yeah, I'm here. This is cool. Good drugs. Yeah, what, what if that like that that bump in the that that delay gave him a, a a second of clarity to hear what Picard was saying and snap out of it. I don't like playing these games. <clears throat> I'm just saying I'm I, I'm more of a I'm more of a this is what happened kind of guy. I don't well, but, you know, but that's, well, the guy asking is asking what happened and we don't just, know. We don't know. No, no, I just explained it. No, yeah, but, nah, it you don't, how do you know if it was Jack because the, the whole or the reason they're able to talk to the board kids is because of the transmitter. Right, but you need Jack. To be able to control the kids. Jack was still inside the hive mind. Right. What, I, what I'm saying, though, so if you disconnect Jack, do the kids go back to normal? That's or, not what he asked. He asked, it's literally on screen, was it Jack unplugging or the cube exploding that turned the kids back to normal? Well, in this case, you could argue there's a theory. What you're doing is you're creating a theory. No, I'm, I'm asking so, but, a question. But, Which one was it? It was the, 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 the exploding of the, well, when Jack, actually, it was neither of the two. It was neither. So the moment that it, they destroyed the enhancer or whatever that thing was that was sending the signal out, as soon as they destroyed that, that would have freed the kids. So it wasn't Jack unplugging or the cube exploding. It was the destruction of the device that was sending the message, so, sending the signal. But but I, but I can't you argue that just unplugging Jack would also then free the kids? It would, but that's not what happened. I it see. was destroyed before Jack became unplugged. I see. So can what? Well, here's a question for you: Can Jack t- talk to the kids without the device? Well, not now because they they're taking the Borg stuff out of out of the. Not, no, no. Either way, just asking answer that question: Can he yes, talk to them without? The yes, device? he talked to Sydney without the device from Jupiter. No, not from Jupiter. Thank you. Okay, so when so they had to destroy that device in order for or or stop Jack or take Jack out of the collective. The, I understand, but Jack didn't come out, so he's asking: Was it Jack being unplugged or the cube exploding? It was neither. It was the destruction of the, I mean, ultimately it would be the cube exploding, but the event that occurred was the destruction of that device immediately severed the connection between Jack and those kids. I know, but what, anyway, I get what you're saying. What I'm asking is, didn't it seem then, if they were aware of what had to happen, the blowing up the beacon was, should have been, it was risky 
Because you have your friends on the ground you can't get close to. It's almost like they weren't trusting Picard to pull Jack out of there. Well, they they had no communication with him, right? They didn't know what was happening. All they knew was that they were out of time. I see. So, you know, I mean, what did we know? They were about to destroy all the cities on Earth. That's true. Yeah. So they had no time left. Yeah. Okay. I, I like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean... Yes, I do believe, Christopher, that had they had Jack been unplugged, that would have stopped it. But they couldn't unplug him, remember, because Jack wouldn't come out. And the cube exploding definitely done it, too. But hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, I'm sure you could have also just killed Jack, but that wasn't happening. Yeah, you could have killed Jack. You're right. Yeah. Brandon for $5. It's been a great, it's been great writing this season with you guys. Thank you for the streams. Brandon, thank you for hanging thank out you, with us. And don't go anywhere. Everyone, just because the card's over, doesn't mean we got. Doesn't mean you guys can't hang out every week with us on Thursdays at at noon thirty. We got other stuff going on. Yeah, because we have strange new worlds coming. So we'll and we'll right. talk more about. Mystic Ranger, how many ships Starfleet has? Anyone count? Asked Terry. I don't know. Oh Lord, that is a good question. A lot. Um, look like a lot there. I mean, you could probably pause it and start counting. My kids would do that. Um, I'm not doing that. I don't know. Good question. We'll ask him. Thank you, Mystic Ranger. Yeah. Okay. You might be able to ask him yourself. We're trying to get him on our uh, show this Monday for Raw Rant. Yeah. At two o'clock. Trying to get Terry on for Monday. We'll see. If we goes. can get him on, then all these questions we can answer him. Then ask him then. It's a year later. Uh, the Enterprise D is going back back into dry dock. That's what it's called, yep. right? In the Navy, dry dock. Yeah. Well, dry dock. You can go into dry dock for repairs, but it's. It's being re-decommissioned, I guess, is the best way to put it. So it's being decommissioned. When you go to dry dock, you're going in for repairs. I see. Yeah. So I've always, I've always found this interesting about Star Star uh, Star Trek. They decommission these ships just to sort of sit around and do nothing. Like it's clearly there's. <laughs> That's funny that you said that. Go ahead. It's a museum. Right, but there's still value so, here, right? Sure. Like, okay. So we do that now. So you've got the, uh, you've got, you know, several World War II era aircraft carriers that are just museums in like San Diego and in Norfolk. People go and they're able to kind of walk around. But I mean, is it still, could it still float out in the ocean? Sure. Could they still do something with it? Oh, but, like that scene from Battleship. The movie Battleship, that one yeah. giant uh, destroyer was like a museum and they used it. The to Battleship. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the battleship was uh, the battleship in the movie Battleship mm -hmm. was like a museum, and they used that low tech thing. Mm -hmm. that, uh, I get it. I mean, yeah. My thing is like this. A lot of these ships can still be uh, this. I, I get the 1701. All right. <laughs> yeah. You know the old Constitution class. <laughs> I get that. But like the Enterprise D and Voyager seem like giant space yeah. fair very worthy. I mean, they're like cities. I mean, you could probably help a lot of people with those things. I'm just saying. Well, I think they, well, what we usually do is we actually sell our, a lot of our old planes and smaller ships, not aircraft carriers. We sell them to other countries. So, and they use the old technology. Oh my God. <clears throat> they did that in one of the William Shatner books. Yeah. They're on the bridge. We, we hear Major Barrett's voice for the last time. Well, the, yeah. So the first thing they do is, is, uh, is Jordy does the shutdown procedure, but they have this moment where they're basically saying goodbye to her. And, um, you know, it's also a character, so it's nice to see it. And Riker has that great line where he's like, I really miss that voice. I would just live there. I don't understand. <laughs> Why are you going to leave? <laughs> well, they, they can't use it anymore, but it'll be there. It's a museum, so it'll be out there and people can check it out. I mean, I wonder if this museum works like others where they can, people can go aboard it or are they just looking at it from the outside, you know? Like Picard is going to go sit in like this 10,000 year old house. Yeah. Starship <laughs> right there, bro. I don't, I don't understand. He wants to be with, you know, on, on a planet maybe. I don't know. Mm. So that was great. I'm going to upvote that. that yeah. Great. I'm going to upvote that too. I, I, I like it made me so, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be honest with you guys. That scene upset me. It like made me feel sad. Mm. Like I felt really sad because I feel like that's the last time we see that ship. 
I think you're right. And it definitely it it made me feel sad. That's all I'm gonna say. I felt sad and and pretty bummed out that that was that was it. It was it was hard going into this last episode yeah. because I knew that was it. And I knew that we have to, you know, we're going to have this last talk, you know, for us, because we'd already seen the show, we weren't looking forward to it every week. Like you guys were, what we were looking forward to every week is these discussions with you guys. Right. You know, this has been the thing that we've enjoyed the most. Now, after this is over, we won't have, I mean, we'll probably still talk Picard, you know, here and there as in the future, but after this week's over, it's going to be uh, moving on to something else. And I just, you know, I wasn't ready to move on. This has been, I could have talked about this for another 10, 15 episodes. No it problem. Should, should have been. It should have been 20 episodes. I don't TV nowadays is so stupid. <laughs> we'll talk about that in the review. It's so, the angry answer. Um, all right. <laughs> so now uh, Jack was fast tracked. He's uh, he's in he's in Starfleet. You know, a lot of Star Trek fans would have been like, oh great, yeah, he gets he gets through Starfleet in a year. Fantastic. And they address it here. He's like uh, they say, you know. They're basically happy for him. And he's like, yeah, it was uh, um, because of my parents, basically. Uh, because of my name. Yeah, he said, right. yeah, it's, it's a little bit of nepotism. Nepotism, yeah. And, uh, and Picard, Picard has- tells him, no, it's it's you're, you you worked hard. And Jack is obviously very talented. He spent years out there on the borders with, with Beverly, uh, you know, fighting and do, doing things. I mean, he's yeah. obviously capable enough to to be in Starfleet. Yeah. He has real world experience, you know, in college, you know, you have college uh, credits for all the book learning, but you, there is also college credits like in the military just for field experience. So it's, 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 mm. it's a thing. All right. So, uh, Picard asked him, you know, you never told me what ship you're being, um, uh, sent to posted to, yeah, posted to. And, um, Oh, that's such a great, you're right. Are, are you going to explain it? Can, can I explain this? I mean, what the what? No, 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 not that. Okay. Can you explain? Uh, can you? Okay, I'll. I'll. I'll Cause do after, so. Well, another day we have a story for you guys. But when when you explained to me this and I watched it, I was like, oh my god! Right? Am I not am I right? Right? You're totally uh, you're 100 right. And we'll we'll so, tell you guys later about that. So, uh, what happens here is well, okay, well we're there, but uh, so basically, Picard just said the name means nothing, and and then Jack's like, I'm not nervous for me. I'm nervous for you. And then he leans over his shoulder and says, because a name means everything. Right. And then we see this, you know, it's the Enterprise G. Right. And the Titan has been refit to be the Enterprise G. And it looks great. Ship looks amazing. Looks really cool. Looking good. Yeah. Um, And he's like, I love how his hand on his shoulders there. It's just, I'm so happy. (laughs) Stop it. And then, and then, just so, so you guys know, uh, w- while while the camera is focusing on Picard, off camera you hear Jack say, "Welcome to the Enterprise." <laughs> off camera, that's true. That's true. Uh, we got another. Uh, yeah, give him a vote. Yeah, I got you. I want the scene up vote for the G. For for the G, we got a super chat from. Um, oh my gosh, did I lose it. Uh, Son of John, you should see the video by Major Grin. Lars is still waiting. Very funny. I'll check it out. <laughs> Major, Major Major Grin does uh he does really funny videos. Major Grin, that's that's nitpicking nerd, right? Yeah. Okay. They get two I think there's two channels. Is there? Because people, I don't people know. I call think... them two different things. Um But but let's Loris, the good point. Now, I believe that Loris knew they were breaking up. So if we go back to the first episode, why are you why are you making that face, man? Yeah, because you're right. There's no way. There's okay, no right. way. Okay. No way, Lawrence. It's funny though. Like, imagine if Lawrence is still at the chateau. Like, I mean, he says he said he'd be back in 48 hours. It's been and like she's like checking a watch. It's been two and a half years. <laughs> well, it's been it's been at least a year. And very least, he said 48 hours, and the very least, it's been like a year a year and well, change. She, yeah, she did say, well, maybe a little bit longer. So I mean, listen, <laughs> a little bit longer. The relationship ended. 365 <laughs> times longer. <laughs> yeah. The relationship ended that day, guys. Right. <laughs> Good one, though, son of John. I love that. We're going to go watch that video. Uh, Super chat from H. Presadio. Sadio. Damn, bro. Um, I'm bad with names. I'm sorry, H. This channel rocks. Keep on keep on keeping. Hashtag Picard 3 win. Amen, brother. 
Thank you for that. Amen. Absolutely. Picard season three was a win. Oh, oh, Shane. Oh, <laughs> but it's Presidente Camacho. Just giving him reasons to do this. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> the journey has been great, bros and chat. Thank you, Kamaj. Uh, so this is great. He comes in, he goes through the door. He's like owning it, confident. He's like, okay, Helm, uh, let's go. We're set a course for Metallus, you know, for, for Metallus and uh, whatever he said, a bunch of stuff. And he sits down in the captain's chair. And then you hear Seven's voice. And she's like, out. And, you know, it's it's just so Seven, the way it's done, you know. And uh, he's sitting there, he goes, but it's comfortable. Right. There's this like, you know, pitter patter between the two that nobody else on that ship would have freaking gotten away with except for Jack. Right. 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 Yeah. For a minute there. I remember when I was watching this for watching this the first time. I thought. Mm -hmm. What? I just watched 10 episodes of amazing television and you're going to make this, this like this is like second rate writing. How are you going to make this guy the captain? Right. Right, right. And, and so what's funny is he only spent a year in Starfleet. So he doesn't have like the military decorum that a lot of the other ones will have. Right. Right. And so he's still and plus they've had all these like life or death moments together. Right. And just, in you know, in the previous year. So they're close. Uh, and then we see Rafi as is her number one. And so and he's she's like, you know, get out, Ensign. <laughs> you know, just yeah. yeah, as it should be. Like he's an ensign. Get the hell out of this. He's chair. an ensign, and they're going on a shakedown cruise. <clears throat> they're going on a shakedown, and and his he he they go through all the roles. I love this. Yeah, like, you want me in? You want me over here in communications? You want me to you know science? Yes, I am not, not as good at science, but you know. And, so, and then she made him basically a counselor to her. So using his world world experience with all of the different races that he's come in contact with, he's going to be a valuable valuable for her on the bridge so she so he's he's basically counselor troy sort of i don't i think she said she's captain's counselor but i don't know counselor for the people you know what i mean right 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 maybe I mean, her I mean, personal he, he is sitting to the same side as troy did right i mean on the d is that the way it was built here now when we saw the titan previously who were the three seats for we know for seven and and for captain shaw who was the third seat for Good question. I don't know. Yeah, we don't know. And we get that moment where she's supposed to do that, <clears throat> the take it out thing. And we think she's going to do it. But right at the last minute, instead of actually saying it, she just uh, smiles. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to. Um, what is she going to say? She would say. I know exactly what she's going to say. Chatteray okay. said it. And I agree wholeheartedly. What is it? Execute. I could see that coming from Seven's mouth. Execute. Execute. N not to mention, first, it's unique. I like that. It sounds yeah. cool. And wouldn't a Borg want to execute a program? What do you do when you start a program? You execute the file. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Execute. Yeah. How about do it now? <laughs> Would that work? Do it now. That was, it, you know, it's literally what Janeway did. Well, Janeway said do it, right? A couple of times she said do it now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. She, okay, she, she can't say assimilate. That's too on the nose. <laughs> Assim assimilate. No, no. The people would be like go in shock over I like that. The that execute. That's great. Execute's perfect. Literally execute's perfect. That's a good one. I, I think you I think you're onto something here. Who came up with that one? Or comply. Someone in the chat said that. No, can't can't be comply. You're right. Well, can't well, be comply. Well, it's it's be, let's see. It's gotta be an action thing. Yeah, it needs to be executed. Now, she could say, set a course, comply. That could work. I mean, comply could be something she says, but execute has got to be her engage. It's got to be her make it so, her hit it, her do it. So they're, uh, this is this is cool. They're all in, in Guinan's bar, and I love this line here. Um, we didn't get to see her, but Jordy says, Guinan's been giving us the side eye for the last half hour. Yeah, so I didn't we know she's there. I, I'm not going to downvote it, but I didn't need that. It's part of why not she, it's her bar dude yeah but she's not there she is there just didn't see her right yeah i don't like that <laughs> okay well we're gonna i, we're I don't, I don't need her to be there so like mentioning her just seems cheap to me well th they closing down the bar so they, they they're basically supposed to be leaving but they're not they're having so much fun and enjoying themselves that they're staying longer than they should be so okay. that's the whole point from, it was to highlight the fact that they're having a good time. From H. Presadio, 
We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Oh, I love this. It's, it's a callback to season two. Right. Um, it was the first season, episode three, The Naked Time. Data began to repeat a dirty quote he heard from someone in the shuttle bay craft. He, and the, it goes like this. There was a young lady from Venus. And then they cut him off here, right, when he says it. But what he said in the episode was, there was a young lady from Venus whose body was shaped like a... And then Captain Car Picard's like, no! Security! No, he's like, he he totally like cut him off by calling somebody else. Right. He was going to say... Worf has this great deadpan line. He goes, I don't understand their humor either. What was he going to say? Seamus? Well, I mean, I don't know. What rhymes with uh, Venus? I don't know. Penis. I know. I just wanted you to say it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on. Guys, you saw that. That was a bunch of bullshit right there. <laughs> I'm drinking my coffee. Knock it off. And then he, he has this great speech that... Oh, I, two things before you do the speech. Two things. Go ahead. Deanna says something first. She tells Worf, have another... Prune um, juice. Prune juice. That's which right. Which is a callback to TNG. And she wants him to sing. Now, um, I didn't get anything out of this speech... But then when I looked it up and I saw what it meant, it meant more to me. I well, do let me explain what it means. And it, while, while this is an upvote, it's an upvote from me, I feel like not everyone's smart enough to appreciate this. And I'm, I'm including myself in that, too. Well, I, if you just listen to what he's saying, you can sort of figure it out. But it is it's Shakespeare. Shakespeare is hard to get. Yeah, so uh, it's from Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. Uh, it's one of Brutus's most famous speeches, and it quite simply means to seize the day and take advantage of this good moment they are having. As while they cannot always control the path they are on, uh, Picard hopes the tides of their lives should continue in a course of happiness so that they may find fortune. Essentially, let us continue this, this uncontrollable ride because tides are high of this wonderful life that we're having right now. Let the good times roll, baby. Yeah, that's what it means. And I didn't impre appreciate it until you sent me that script and I looked it mm -hmm. up and I was like, oh, that was great. That was per a perfect ending speech. It was great. Yeah. And it, and it also collates, collate. it also corresponds well with the fact that, you know, Patrick Stewart's a Shakespearean actor. And it's really, and also I think, you know, Jean-Luc Picard's probably a fan of Shakespeare. So it makes sense. All right, now we're going to end it on... Uh, oh, I just love that. Yeah. My my last up vote here. You want to vote for this? Me too. No, it's not my last up vote, but yeah, definitely. Bro, I was trying to do a bit, and you, you always step on my bits, dude. How did I step on your bit? You stepped on my bit right now. I'll tell you right now. You said it was your last up vote. I said it's not I my know, last like, up vote. Bro, I was, I was explain the bit in a second. Now that I've explained it, it makes it pathetic. See, if you hadn't said you messed up my bit, nobody would ever know. No, because you said it's not my last up vote because you're, 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 okay, just I stop. wasn't going to say just, nothing else. Just, just, just stop for a second. One second. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is the perfect way to Can end their story. It? This is yeah. the way they ended their story in the original TNG run. This is the mm. only, and I will tell you right now, the only way this could have ended. Yeah, absolutely. There's no other yeah. way to end this story other than this way. It once again proves that he just he's one of us. That's that's all it is. Right. I mean, we all knew like Picard season three is what would happen if fans made the move, made it made a series. And right. let me tell you something. He was limited by how much money he had. He, he this wasn't everything he wanted to do. He wanted to do so much more. Yeah. But there's only so much you can do with, with the amount of money that you're given. Yeah. Well, and, and he got he got sort of shafted on the budget. Right. Oh, totally. I mean, he, a fraction of what? A fraction uh, of what the other two seasons season got. One had. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, what I, I The one comment I want to make before you go away from here is I feel like when we look around this table when they do shots, and it's a long sequence because they're doing the credits, I feel like what we are seeing around this table is not Picard, Riker, Deanna, Data. I feel like what we're seeing around this table is Patrick Stewart, is Jonathan Frakes. I feel like what we saw around this table, if you look at their faces very closely, the genuine happiness I have never seen on Jean-Luc Picard's face, the level of joy mm -hmm. that you see on the face right. of this person. Right. And I do believe it's them all together filming this final scene going, wow, what a run. And yep. nowhere in Hollywood, they're like a weird... 
um, anomaly. Okay. The, they, these people hang out with each other. They spend time with each other. They are a true family off the show. And that just, and you'll hear it from everybody in Hollywood. That is not normal. Right. Like to become friends for so long because people go their separate ways. They've bonded together over the years and they're close. So what people always ask them, what was it like coming back and being all together again? And they're like, well, shit, we're together. We had lunch last week. Right. <laughs> we had these giant events. But this moment, you know, them putting a period on their characters, I think you could see this, that they were honestly, truly having fun as, you know, regular people around this poker table. Yeah, I think I agree with you. Now, um, well, that's it. That's the end, end of the review. That's it, guys. Well, I, I, I just like oh, the series. What, oh, wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> fucking you're stepping on my bit again, Shane. It's already been stepped on. You like, keep, I'm making. I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying it. to pull it back, and you keep stepping. All right. You know what? Effort. <laughs> yeah, because they forgot five minutes ago. Yeah, hey, just, just when you think bit. it's over, it's not. And <laughs> let me right. just let me get to this real quick. Because uh, Ke- cool Kenneth answered this by the way as you stepped on my bit. Q oh, law. Thank you, Kenneth. You're right. Yeah, he stepped on my cue. Knowing Kenneth, I'm not sure if that's a good LOL or a bad LOL. He, (laughs) you know, I think it's good. I think it's good. All right. So what happens is we think it's over. And what did I tell you guys last week? What did I what did I say last week? And on Tuesday, I said you said shut off the TV as soon as the credits roll. No, you don't see anything else. I said don't stop at the credits. Don't turn (laughs) off that TV until you see. Text the on black. Of his eyes. No, that's White. right. That's text on black. Until you see a black screen with text, you don't shut that TV off. And uh, boom, we get. You know, I will say he could have paused a little longer. If you go back to go back, if you can go back to the end right here, look at how quickly they go to the next scene. I would have added another like two or three or four seconds before adding this end end credit scene. Wouldn't you have? Oh, you mean like have just black for a second? Mm for a little bit longer like because it, it's it's very close to like moving right to it oh no it really yeah, it literally fans into it yeah yeah so i'm like i would have i would have made people think it was over well because people I think, probably afraid that people would turn it off i think people did did think it was over uh mm-hmm. and that's probably what you're right because he was playing the credits just like you like the other episodes with the picard at the end and all that you know yeah um and yeah here we go we are on the Enterprise. The D. There's the Lower picture of the G. D. And there's now, there's his mom and dad. Okay. Just real quick, guys. You guys weirded out by this picture? That's you like 1989 right there. That's you not... should be weirded out about it. This is not Jean-Luc Picard and Beverly Crusher. This is Patrick Stewart and Gates McFadden at some event. Right. And it looks like they're what? Getting married? You know, there's there's some people who are like, are they together or not? And, you know, this really just makes it more ambiguous as to what their status is. Right. Because this, this is definitely like an actual picture from, like, Getty Images. So. <laughs> yeah. And uh, who do you hear, Shane? Who do you hear, Shane? Ooh. Oh, I just love this line, too. Q. I, <clears throat> uh, I love what he says. Up he. he vote Q says. Ding. Yeah. Q, Q says. uh a chip off the old block. <laughs> well, look at you, a chip off the old block. If you watch the end of our, there's a, we have an interview with Terry at the end of our podcast prime thing. And basically he says he just had to bring Q back. Right. So an interesting thing happened. Um, if you would have really, if you had been watching us uh, kind of towards the end of Picard season two or during that time frame, Right. There was an interview that John Delancey gave. Right where he talked about ep- seasons two and three. Right. He did. He did. He said it. Yeah, he did. And, and he did. And yep. he, he actually gave away that he was in season three. He, he shot it. They, cause they shot it back to back when he was there. Right. So this was actually shot at the beginning. Right. And you know, what's right? funny is like, um, like they were trying to play it off as like, he just misspoke. No, right. No. They did. They did. And it was not. He actually gave it away. Right. And if and, and nobody caught it. We've been sitting on this since November. Right. Knowing this, knowing that he gave it away yeah. and didn't say anything. And you know what? Not no. None of those uh, websites that end with Trek or start with Trek 
put it together before now, but he did give it away. And I got to tell you, even though I love that we saw the series early, mm -hmm. this is one of those moments where we knew we were right mm. about something and we couldn't say anything because as soon as we actually saw it, we couldn't report on it. Right, yeah. And it's, I mean, keeping this secret is just like... That would have mm. been, that would have 100% have been a video had we not seen the series early. It would have been. It would have been a, how Q is back, you know? Yeah. Um, well, it would have it totally taken over everything. And the fact that it stayed secret is just... Chef's kiss, as my brother would say. Uh, I love that everybody was shocked by this. I love that it came back and nobody expected it. Q is supposed to be dead. Um, they 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 address that here. Um, essentially, Q says, you know, the trial. <laughs> you you said the trial was over. I said, yeah, for your father it was, but but it's just begun for you. Yeah, and why, it just why, wait, wait, wait. He sets up a new series. Give Shame. me two upvotes, please. Yeah. Why? 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 Because the trial never ends. <laughs> right. Of course. I'm like, why Jack? Well, why not Jack? Because he'd yes. be the next person, whoever two, it was. Two upvotes for me, too. I'll take one. Um, it was funny. I texted uh, uh, Vader, and I was like, after you finally seen everything, I'm like, hey, so what'd you think? After you finally seen everything, you know, <clears throat> I'm, just, I'm, I'm expecting him to either come beat me up or tell me what he thinks. And he goes, I'm just happy Q is back, man. I'm thrilled that we have Q back. It's it. I didn't like that he died. I didn't like it. Um, I knew it couldn't have been the end. Uh, for people asking how, it's very simple. Okay, the guy's basically a god. You have no idea yeah. at what point in his life that is. You don't know if this is happening in his life now. You know now well, after yeah. or began. You don't know. It's not linear. Well, he says it. You know. Oh, you humans think so linearly. Right. You know. Um, but yeah, so that's that's our review, and um, let's. Uh, We're gonna end with Christopher Mays' most yes. generous super chat. Christopher Mays, my dude, always. Wow, coming. Chris, thank you so much God. for this super chat. It's, we appreciate it unbelievably. And Brian, I think you have to give him as many upvotes as he wants because that's. Uh, yeah, officially, you get as many upvotes as you want, bro. What, what? <laughs> a, a bunch of upvotes for our boy John Delancey. What Christopher? And thank, and thank oh. you guys for an amazing season. And helping me find Star Trek again. Wow, Chris, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, Christopher, um, you gotta tell me how many upvotes you want. What's a bunch? Is a bunch what? What is what, what's a bunch in like a, a couple is two, a few is three, several is four. So I, I would say a bunch is five. Okay. Bum, 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 um, bum, but bum, on bum, what bum. on what Chris says here, I just want <clears throat> to talk about finding Star Trek again. Been wanting to tell this story, but it's been. Um, it's been a long time for us to to it's wait to be able to tell it to you guys. I'm not saying it's been a long time. road. Don't do that. I knew as soon as I started to say that, I knew it was coming. Getting from um, there to here. Sorry, go ahead. So when when we had the opportunity to see this show early, um, it was we watched it, and um, as you guys can see, for you guys that are having this emotional moment with us, it was unbelievable. It was like Star Trek is back, or Star Trek is completed. It like there was just all these emotions going through us and that made us reach out to Terry Metalis, who fortunately, um, unlike many showrunners was interacting on Twitter with people. And so it, it gave us the opportunity. We're like, listen, we have to, we have to talk to this, this guy because right. what he created was incredible. And, uh, so we reached out to him and, you know, he was like, Oh, okay. Wow. Cool. Uh, and so we had this, this talk back and forth and I'll tell you what our thought process was, Chris. You gave us a super chat and helping you find Star Trek again. What we realized when we saw this was this was going to give legacy fans who've been disappointed by newer Star Trek. It's going to give them the Star Trek feeling again. It's what we've been waiting for years, you know, since Enterprise left. It's what we've been waiting for, you know, and um, and we wanted to be a part of of bringing that to people. So when we talked to, to Terry, we explained to him, look, we loved it. Um, we want to be a part of getting the word out to people and letting them know how great it's going to be. Now, we didn't realize that doing that was going to make people hate us so much initially. Huh. But a lot of people like you, Chris, and like some a lot of you others, you guys believed us. You said, you know what? I'm going to keep an open mind. Um, Shane and Brian have never lied to us before. 
um, we kind of all think along the same lines and you trusted us and you watched it and it's now it's paid off. And so um, it was important to us that we get the word out so that people didn't go into Picard season three with hate in their hearts, because sometimes when you do that going into a show, it's hard to see what's good about it. And you can say that for a lot of the people who've argued about it. You know, we've said a lot about Doomcock and and kind of, you know, his 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 group that goes out there and they hate all Trek, all new Trek um, because they can't have their hearts opened up. And if they were true fans of TNG and they love these characters, it's sad that because they couldn't have an open mind going into this, that they're not going to be able to enjoy this. This is just something that's lost from their lives. And it's something that we've been added to. I can't remember the last time I have felt like this about entertainment. <clears throat> I went back and tried to think about it. Maybe it was the end of Endgame with with uh, Captain America uh, out there oh, facing the hordes all by himself. And, that that made me feel something too. <clears throat> and you hear, you know, on your left. Oh you God, know. dude, I choked up a little bit there. So it's like. You know, it's been it. We don't get these moments very often where we're just like wrecked by something we love. And um, and we wanted to share that with you. So thank you for sharing this time with us and doing this. Um, And hopefully, fingers crossed that we have more coming and we're going to be able to keep having these conversations and doing these things for you. We're going to keep telling the truth no matter what happens, whether it's good or bad. And hopefully you guys keep coming back. So thank you again for that super chat, Chris. We, we really appreciate it.